How many people have ever been stressed out before? Anybody ever been stressed out? I've been stressed out a lot in my life. Every time before I preach, I get stressed out, to be honest with you. Uh, but when I was about 12 years old, man, I got really stressed out. Um, I had a crush on uh, uh, this hot little girl named Carrie. And I was like, man, this girl, I'm going to marry this girl. Right? That, that, that was my plan. I was like, man, this is who I want to spend the rest of my life with. Uh, but I had a speech impediment thing. and I didn't really want to talk to her, so it was always kind of like awkward in the hallway, like... Hey, I, I, I see you over there. You know, we try to like say, hey, but she was always like, creep, loser. Uh, anyways, I didn't really talk to her a whole lot, uh, but I was hanging out at this carnival one time with all my boys, like just chilling, eating lots of hot dogs and funnel cakes and just having the time of our lives. And we're hanging out. I'm like, man, this is so fun. Just hanging out with the boys and up walks Carrie. And I was like, this is my moment. Like this, I'm gonna hold her hand. Man, I'm gonna kiss her on the Ferris wheel. Like this is my moment, right? 12 years old, had one track mind, hold this girl's hand, try not to look like a fool. That was, that was pretty much the plan. And everything was kind of going fine. We're hanging out, having a good time until somebody had the worst idea in the history of mankind. And, and they said, hey, I think we should ride those horrible demonic things called the teacups. How many people have ever ridden the horrible demonic things called the teacups? That job's going to be in hell. Like cats, teacups, and Tar Heel fans, because Pastor Matt's not here, right? So I can say that. Do we have any Tar Heel fans in the house? Oh, not a lot. Praise God. I'm going to pray for your salvation today. It's going to be awesome. <gasps> oh, yeah. What, the Blue Devil fans? That's, that's my people. Do we have any Blue Devil fans in the house? All right. Uh oh. Yeah, praise God. That's a godly house here. Anyways, here's my thought process, right? He said, man, we should ride these horrible demonic things. He actually said, that would be such a good idea. Let's ride the teacups. And here was my thought process. Every other time I'd ridden these horrible demonic things called the teacups, I have projectile vomited all over everything. Yet this time, I mean, I'm, in, I'm 12 years old now, right? I'm a big dog. I ain't going to throw up on this ride. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to prove, I'm going to prove to carry that I'm, I'm man, I can, I can hold my own on the teacups. And I get on this ride. Approximately 20 seconds into the ride, I could feel the hot dogs and the funnel cakes, and the french fries, and everything else that I, I had just eaten slowly start to come up. Right? You know that feeling, where it hits the back of your throat, and you're like, mm, this, this is, mm, it's not going to be okay. But I did what any 12-year-old would do in that situation. I swallowed that mug. Right? I did. Like, not throwing up. I'm going to be a tough guy. And in that moment, I was stressed out. Approximately 12 seconds later, it comes up again, but this time it was not just hit the back of my throat. This time my entire mouth filled with vomit. It started running down my nose. Yes, visual, I know, it's awful. I promise it was more awful in the moment. Like, you guys are all stressed out right now. No, no, no. I was very stressed out, right? So I have this mouth full of all the things I had eaten, and this time I could not swallow. I tried to, but it just came out my nose more. And true story, I projectile vomited all over everything. It was awful. I was stressed out, right? In that moment, I was a mess. I was stressed out. And here, man, I'm sure we could have some fun today and I could hand this microphone around to all of us and we could all tell hilarious stories of times we were in a mess and that we were stressed out and stuff and we'd laugh and we'd cry and it would be hilarious. Except I also think that here in this room, there's probably some heavier stories that have some stress involved with them and are kind of some mess. I'll go first. Um, I had a speech impediment as a kid my whole life. I could not talk at all. If you said, hi, what's your name? I would say something along the lines of, 
True story. Every morning I got up and I planned my day around how can I not speak to anybody. I was riddled with anxiety in a way that it's hard to even understand. It was awful. Horrible speech impediment, lots of anxiety, except also on top of that, I just had this hole inside of my soul. I didn't really understand why that it was there. Like it was like an emptiness. It was like a void that I just had from the time I was a little kid. And I didn't really know how to handle that. Had the speech impediment and the anxiety and stuff over there and the emptiness and all of that going on at the same time. And I made it my aim that I'm going to try to get as much pleasure from this world as possible. And I started chasing after all kinds of different things. I started chasing after popularity. I was like, man, if I can get real cool and all the kids like me and I wear the cool clothes, then I'll be happy and, and whole on the inside. It'll calm my nerves. But it didn't work. And I was like, okay, it's not popularity, then it's sports. And if I get really good at sports, then it'll be awesome. But as you can see, I'm short and white and can't jump, so that didn't work so well. It's the best joke I got. Y'all got to laugh a little bit harder than that at me. And it's like, okay, sports isn't it, so I'll try pornography. And I chased after that for a while, and then it was alcohol, and it got into harder and harder things. And by the time I was a senior in high school, I was an IV heroin junkie. Yeah, that means I stuck needles in my arm trying to get pleasure from this world. And everything that goes, man, everything that goes along with that lifestyle, I experienced. All the legal issues, the health issues, the financial issues. And my life was a mess. And I'll be honest with you, I tried everything to get out of it. All the rehabs, all the meetings, all the medications, all that. So I tried to get out of it, except every time I got clean for just a few hours, that hole in my soul was still there. That stress was still there, and I did not know how to calm it. It had to go treat it. I had to treat it. And I'd always go right back to this thing that was killing me and destroying me. But eventually, man, I got down to 100 pounds. And I was 20 years old, 100 pounds, um, and I, I was out of money. And the options I had on the table were either homelessness or uh, to go to yet another treatment center. And I was like, man, I guess I'll try another treatment center. Uh, and I showed up. I didn't have hardly anything to my name. And I went and I'd been there about a week. I was coming off of hard drugs and I got invited to a church service. And I wasn't raised in the church. It wasn't one of those things where like I walked in, like I didn't have any conception of God really. But I was like, all right, I'll go, man. I thought it was gonna be cool music and pretty girls. You know, that's, that's how come I went. I can leave treatment for a little bit. And I got there and the Lord had different plans. I heard about Jesus that night. I heard the gospel. I heard that there's a real God who's made to fill that hole inside of me, who loves me as screwed up and broken as I was. He could fill that void. He could clean me up. He could change that life. And I didn't understand everything at that moment, except I placed my faith in Jesus that night. And I'm telling y'all, nothing has been the same since. Come on, let's give God a round of applause for that. But here's the thing, guys, it's not just me who is stressed out and messy, who has a story like that, man. But as we look around at our world, we see the same thing. Like, cut on the news for three seconds, and it is extremely clear that our world is stressed out and messy. I mean, all the COVID-19 stuff happening right now and all the different viewpoints on it, people are dying, people think it's a conspiracy, all that, right? They're, they're, we're stressed out. But it isn't only that, it's, it's all the racial tensions happening right now as well. All the injustice, all the different viewpoints, all the other ideologies that are at play in there. Man, and 
heading into an election season, right? There is lots of arguing and, and, and slandering and mudslinging even in the church. And I feel like as we look out at our world, it's very clear that our world is stressed out and messy, except it's not just out there, external circumstances, it's also in here. And hopefully uh, that your story isn't exactly like mine with a speech impediment and drug addiction and all kinds of stuff, man, but you have your own messes and your own stresses that are happening in your life right now. And I hope that through uh, the scripture that we're gonna look at here this morning, uh, that you'll have an encounter with God and uh, that things will absolutely change in your life. Is that okay this morning if we look in the Bible all right, if you have a Bible, uh, you can flip over uh, to the Old Testament prophet, Jeremiah. I love saying that, Jeremiah. Isn't that a cool, isn't that a cool name? Jeremiah, you wanna try it with me? Is that cool if we try it? One, two, three, Jeremiah. Oh yeah, you can have more fun than that. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three, Jeremiah. All right, chapter two. Verses 12 and 13. Do y'all mind reading it with me? Is it gonna be on the screens? Awesome, do y'all mind reading it with me? All right, let's try it. One, two, three. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked, be utterly desolate, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters and huge cisterns for themselves, <laughs> broken cisterns that can hold no water. That was my fault. I messed y'all up right in the moment. I apologize. <laughs> oh man. I love this scripture and I love this prophet. I love Jeremiah because he was from a small town, the smallest tribe of a small town. And he had this ministry, he was called into ministry when he was a young lad. And then his whole life he preached hard and he preached to repent uh, because he saw that his people Israel had turned away from Yahweh in a lot of ways, turned away from God. And he was trying to tell them, hey, 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 life is not found over there away from God. Life is found in the person and the presence of God. And his whole life he only had two converts. Can you believe that? He preached his whole life and everyone hated his guts except for two people. What a ministry. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> you know, I feel like halfway through, I'd be like, hey, Lord, I, I quit. This is clearly not working, um, but I want to do something else, right? But he kept going. And all over the course of his life, he preached and preached and preached. And he told people, turn away from idolatry, turn back to God. And he explains in this passage a few things, right? But he uses this analogy of types of water. And what I have up here on stage with me is one type of water that is called smart water, uh, which is smart you know, because it gets you to pay like $12 for it. So it, it has to be very smart, right? But that tastes good. Right, it's, it's clean, it's amazing water. And I want you to look at that. I'm gonna put it down here, right there. And then I have this other water. And I was planning on using toilet water for this, except then I realized that would be nasty. So it's not toilet water, it's other kind of water. But I just want you to imagine that's toilet water. Okay, I didn't wanna get my hands dirty. So there it is, toilet water. Uh, but I'm gonna put it right in front of me. Here, and I want you to picture, right, what he's saying ultimately in this passage is that there is living water available, right, which is like streams. It's clean. It's life-giving. It's amazing. And all the people have turned away from that living water and are over here trying to drink toilet water, ultimately, that it isn't actually going to give life. It's actually hurting you when you drink it. So three points real quick for us this morning, and then I'll wrap up. Here's point number one. We are made for living water. You are made for living water. He explains in this text that there is a 
fountain of living water that gives life, that's pure, that's amazing. And he's obviously talking about a relationship with the Lord. And here's the thing I want us to get is that we are made for that relationship. It's in him that we find life. It's not in the things of the world. And as we're stressed out, I know it's easy to run to all these other things in, in hopes of calming our soul and finding life, except those things offer instant satisfaction, except then long-term pain and consequences. And he's saying, but there is a living water. There is an amazing type of water that gives life and long-term life, and it actually calms your soul. I love this scripture in the book of Psalms. It says that this is probably my favorite scripture in the Bible. I mean, if you don't know this one, like write it down and take it home with you because this is my favorite scripture in the Bible. It says this, that you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I love that scripture, right? Because it's not talking about God like he's an angry guy in the sky who's just waiting to smite you, but rather he makes known to us the path of life. In his presence, there is the fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. God is where the joy is. That hole in our soul that we feel is there and it's meant to be filled with the presence and the person of God. He is tasty. He is what we were made for. He gives life. Here's point number two. All of us have the tendency to drink other types of water. All of us, all of us have the tendency to drink other types of water explains here that Israel has turned away from God and they have tried to find their own way uh, to have life and to have joy and have pleasure and have peace amidst this crazy world. What he's trying to get through their heads is that all those other gods, all those other things will not give you life. Life is only found in the person and work of Jesus. Jesus is where life is. There's a scripture in the book of Romans that says this in verse 23. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All people, right? And I know that I was a drug addict and stuff, except he's not just talking about the really bad people like me. He's talking about all of us. All of us are made to have a personal relationship with God, except through our sin, all of us have turned away from that living water and have turned towards things that do not give life. There's all kinds of things we turn to as we're stressed in crazy seasons like this, eating, shopping, food, uh, relationships, all kinds of different things. And through our sin, we are separated from God and that leaves a hole in our soul. And oftentimes this turns into addictions. Oftentimes this turns into habits and hangups that are not just one-time events, except it enslaves our heart, our mind, and our body. That's exactly what addiction is, right? It's turning to anything other than God in order to fill our vacancies in a way that enslaves our heart, our mind, and our body. All right, that's point number two. Here's point number three. There is hope. There is hope. And I think if we're honest, a lot of us in this room are probably right there. We're stressed out from all the things in the world, man. We got so much going on externally, internally, in our own homes, in our own hearts. And I think oftentimes we turn to these other things that do not give life. But there is hope. I got a friend, uh, his name is Chad. Um, he has a little girl named Skylar. 
Uh, she's about eight years old right now. Uh, but when she, she was a few months old, a really young girl, um, she uh, just had a fever one night and stuff. So he's like, okay, that's cool. I'll put her to bed. And about three o'clock in the morning, morning, did you hear that? <laughs> morning. <laughs> he heard her losing her mind in the other room, but just crying her eyes out, screaming for daddy and stuff. So he gets up, he's half asleep. Uh, he starts walking down the hall, he flips on the light, and as he gets closer, he smells this horrendous smell that only parents know that smell. As he gets closer, he's like, but that smells worse than the normal smell that I smell. And as he gets closer, it gets more smelly and stinky, and he finally gets to the door, and he opens the door and flips on the light, and this girl had puked, pooped, and peed all over the place. Like it was ever, it was in her hair. It was in between her toes. It was absolutely everywhere. And what do you think he did in that moment? You think he said, ooh, this is like, this is nasty. Okay, here's what I'm gonna need you to do. You clean yourself up and then I'll come back once you're all cleaned up. Do you think he did that? No. He reached into the mess. He reached into the mess. He got his hands covered in all kinds of things that he didn't want his hands covered in. He cleaned her up. He gave her a bath, cleaned the sheets, cleaned the crib up, kissed her on the forehead and laid her back into a clean environment. Now, if he's going to do that for his little girl, how much more is our heavenly father going to do that for you and I? He's a good father. He's not scared of your mess, Rescue House. He ain't scared of your junk. He's willing to get his hands really dirty. And he proved that when he sent Jesus here. He sent Jesus here to earth. He lived a perfect life in our place because we can't. He was crucified on a criminal's cross. And he was put in a tomb and on the third day he rose from the grave conquering sin and death and everything. Now, for years I heard that story about Jesus and I was like, man, what does that have to do with me? I'm so broken, man, I'm a heroin addict or man, I'm just empty. I got this speech impediment thing going on. Like, what does that have to do with me? And I'll tell you how it has something to do with me and you is what he did on the cross is he paid for the very thing that separates us and the all satisfying God of the universe. He paid for the thing that blocks us from that life-giving living water that causes that hole in our soul. He paid for all of our sin, all of our shame, everything that's ever happened to us. He, he paid for it on the cross in order that we can be reconciled to the God of the universe. And we don't have to drink from that toilet water anymore, but rather we can go to the life-giving living water. It is the presence of God and drink. I love in John chapter four, I didn't plan on sharing this, but in John chapter four, he's having a conversation with a lady uh, that had a pretty sketchy past. It had all these husbands and was currently living with someone that wasn't her husband. And Jesus approaches her and he says this, that if you drink of this water, you'll soon be thirsty again, except if you drink from the water that I will give you, you will never thirst again. Once you get a taste of this, you never want to go back to the other. Once you get a taste of Jesus, you never want to go back to the other. So here's my question. Have you ever tasted that living water before? Have you ever acknowledged that, man, I'm a sinner, I can't save myself, and I need Jesus to do it and place your faith in it. Because here today in just a few minutes, I wanna give you that offer exactly like I heard 10 years ago and it changed everything for me. I wanna offer that to you, man. But for other of us here in the room and online, 
uh, think we are Christians. You know, that we have placed our faith in Jesus at one point in our life, except at some point along the way uh, that we have just kind of slowly gotten uh, distracted. And in stressful times in life that we have changed back from the living water over to the other types of water, the broken cistern that can hold no water. The more we pour, the more it flows out the other side. And here today, Jesus is saying, you can repent. You can turn away from those hurts, habits, and hangups that you've had. Man, you can turn away from the idolatry. You can turn away from running to other life sources and you can come back home. You can drink from him again. How that happens in a few ways. Here's way number one in Acts three. I love this scripture. We got Acts 3 we can throw up on the screen. It says this, repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out and times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And I think oftentimes I read that word, repent, and I think some high religious angry word and stuff, but it's actually an invitation from God in order to drink of his spirit again. Turn from that turn back to that. That's number one. Here's number two. It's in James. Chapter five, it says this. Oh, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Man, tell someone about what you're dealing with. It's crazy how it loses so much of its power when you just speak it out loud. When you say, hey, I'm I'm struggling with this. Hey, I've started looking at something on the internet again. Hey, I've had a few too many drinks. Hey, I've slipped into that old habit or hang up. It has great power as you speak it out loud to someone who can pray for you. And then lastly, and these are the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter five. And it says this, I mean, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. Or it's a whole lot better to lose one of your members than your whole body be thrown into hell. Here's a translation for that. I mean, if you have an area in your life that's causing you to head over here over and over again, to drink from the water, the other type of water, you have to do whatever it takes in order to turn away from that. I mean, I know for me with drug addiction, I had to go to rehab, had to change my friend groups, had to erase a lot of numbers out of my phone. Like, what is that action step for you? So once you repent and you confess, and what are the practical changes you can make in your life? I wanna close with this. Uh, the scripture in John chapter seven. This is the invitation to you this morning, Rescue House. This is the invitation for you from Jesus. Let's throw it up on the screen. It says, on the last day of the feast, he hopped up and he cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. He spoke this about the Holy Spirit. That's your invitation, Rescue House. Come and drink from Jesus. Turn away from everything else. Come and drink from Jesus. Let's pray, guys. Heavenly Father, I pray that you do what only you can do right now. Draw people to yourself. Have them turn from everything else and place their faith in you. And for the Christians, God, I pray that you do uh, just what your spirit does and that's convict and change us and sanctify us. I pray that you do that work now. With all heads down and all eyes closed, if you're here and you know that you are not yet a Christian, 
Uh, that you've never tasted that living water like we talked about this morning, uh, then I'm gonna invite you to pray a prayer with me. It isn't the prayer that saves you, but it's your faith that saves you that's behind the prayer. He's listening. He's here. He's closer than your closest thoughts. Pray something like this to him right now. Heavenly Father, I need you to save me. I know I'm a sinner and I know I can't save myself, but I believe that you can. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the grave. I repent of my sin and I place my faith in you, Jesus. With all heads down and all eyes closed, if you just prayed that and you meant it, would you throw your hand in the air for me and just acknowledge, hey, I, I prayed to receive Christ. You're not the only one. Anybody else? Awesome. You can put your hands down. All right, guys, everyone can open your eyes and look back up here and we're gonna head into worship. There's people here this morning that just place their faith in Jesus for the first time. That's amazing. Let's praise God for that. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in with us today. I hope that this message has blessed you and your family. And if this ministry is a blessing to you, I would invite you to partner with us financially by giving through the Rescue House app or online at our website. I'd also encourage you to share this message with your friends and your family members or on social media so that it can be a blessing to others as well. And lastly, I would love to invite you to be a part of what God is doing here by coming to an in-person gathering here at our Moxville campus. We love you guys. We hope you have a great week and we will see you back next Sunday.